Hey there! Today we are cooking with chicken, rosemary, lemon, and root vegetables. On this episode of What Do You Make of This? We're cooking a roast chicken dinner. A roast chicken dinner is such a wonderful meal. It's hearty, it's comforting, and while roasting an entire chicken isn't that difficult, it can be time consuming. This recipe takes all of the ideas of a roast chicken dinner, but has everything ready from start to finish in a little more than 30 minutes. The secret to that is just having a couple of shortcuts to help speed things along. So I'm going to show you how we get started for this. Two of the shortcuts I like to use are prepared vegetables. So we have here baby carrots and baby potatoes. Baby carrots, by the way, are not actually baby carrots. They're big carrots that have just been peeled and chopped into bite-sized pieces. Since that's what I would normally be doing with whole carrots anyway, we're going to just take a little shortcut and have these ready to go straight into a bowl. One less thing to prep. I'm also using these cute little baby potatoes and they come in all colors, all styles. This is actually a mix of purple potatoes and white potatoes and red potatoes. And because they're so tiny, they cook very quickly. They're also already washed. So there too, shortcut. Now that we've got two of our three root vegetables, I'm just going to set these aside because the first thing I want to cut up is a lemon. And this lemon is going to do two different jobs today. It's going to season the chicken while it cooks and it's also going to season the vegetables while they cook. So to do that, I'm actually going to start by just snipping off the ends of the lemon. Like that, I'll just get that out of the way. Because what you want to do for the first part is we're going to slice a little ring of lemon per piece of chicken. So for this particular recipe, I'm going to be using four chicken thighs. So I'm just going to make four fairly thin little rings of lemon. And I'll show you what we do with those next. But basically what we've got here are just some little wheels. And all I'm going to do is set them aside because we don't actually need those just yet. And we'll just let those wait until we're ready for them. With the rest of this lemon, it's actually going to become kind of a seasoning for the vegetables while they cook. And what I like to do is just chop it into smaller chunks. I'm going to cut it into quarters, kind of just playing around with it. And from quarters, I'm going to do oh, thirds. I'm basically looking for about one inch cubes of lemon, but you can do them bigger or smaller based on what you like. I actually really like lemons and once they're roasted, I find they're actually quite nice to eat, but not everybody feels that way about lemons and I can respect that. So if you don't plan on eating your lemons, you can certainly leave them bigger. I think it's worth a taste though. So these lemons are just going to go into the bowl with the other root vegetables. Set those off to the side. The last thing we're going to be chopping up is the onion. So I've just got one big onion here. And for this recipe, I'm going to start by just cutting off that leafy end, turn it flat side down, and then we're just going to go straight through the root to cut it in half. And that makes it a lot easier to peel your onion. So I'm going to get these big papery pieces out of the way first. And then I'm just going to find where kind of the, the papery part of the onion is. There we go. Usually if you peel from each half, you can find where the papery part is. And just peel that off, peel that back, and get it out of the way. And we'll do the same thing with this one. So I'll peel a little bit off of that corner, and I actually can't find where it ends. So we're going to just start peeling from this side and see what happens. I may need to remove an extra layer. Let's see. It's very sticky tonight. There we go. Nope, that actually looks like it's going to be okay. It was just playing some tricks on me. So we'll get those papers out of the way. And now for this, I like to have really nice big chunks of onion because then they cook at about the same speed as the potatoes and the carrots do. So I am going to actually chop off the root ends. We'll get that guy out of the way too and get those out of the way. I'm going to cut this onion. He's a pretty big onion. So I'm going to cut it each half in half again. So now we've got quarters. And from there, I'm going to cut these quarters into thirds. That feels pretty good. So very similar to what we did with the lemon. Instead of one inch cubes though, they're about two inch cubes. So I'm going to just break them in half. Now everything is one inch cubes and it's about the same size as our potatoes. Maybe slightly bigger, but they'll probably come apart a little bit as they cook. So don't worry about it too much. So we'll get those broken like so. 
and I kind of like in this recipe bigger pieces of onion, smaller pieces of onion, because some of them stay a little bit crunchy, some of them get really nice and soft, and I like to have those different textures and flavors in this meal. So same thing here, we're going to turn these quarters into sixths, that's a hard word to say, and just break them apart into the bowl. My hands are just a little bit wet and slippery from slicing vegetables, so I'm going to just give my fingers a quick dry here so that we can get seasoning. So by the way, the carrots and the potatoes, I used about two cups of each, and that's going to give a pretty generous one cup serving per person. This meal is going to make either two full servings or else a serving for today and maybe some leftovers for lunch the next day. But you can always double, triple, quadruple, 10 times. That's the beauty of this meal is everything still cooks at about the same speed, no matter how much you are making. So to these vegetables, I'm going to actually take some rosemary, and I'm not going to use all of it because we need some for the chicken but I'm going to throw just a couple of sprigs straight in. We're not going to chop it. What we're doing with this rosemary, we're not actually going to eat it in this recipe. It's just going to kind of infuse everything that we are cooking so that it has a little bit of a rosemary flavor to it without being intense rosemary. I love rosemary, but I can admit it's a little bit woody and it's a little bit almost piney tasting. And if you chop it fine into something like this, the entire meal will start to taste like rosemary, and that's not really what we're going for. We're just looking for a background note. So if you leave it in big pieces, it will infuse while everything roasts, but then you don't have chewy, tough, woody pieces of rosemary to get through because we're just going to throw it all out when it's done cooking. So into a bowl it goes, and I'm going to add a pretty generous amount of olive oil to this. This is about a, maybe two teaspoons of olive oil. I may go up to a tablespoon if as I'm tossing it, I feel like it needs a little more, but usually two te teaspoons will get the job done. And what this oil is going to do is it's going to coat all of the vegetables and it's going to just help them to cook a lot more evenly so that everything is finished at the same time. So before I toss it all together, I'm going to get all of the seasoning on top and then that way we only have to mix one time. So to this, I'm going to go in with a pretty generous amount of salt because this is actually a lot of vegetables. So I'm going to use probably about a half a teaspoon of salt going into here. You may even want to add just a little bit more because all of these root vegetables are quite a blank canvas. And if you add a lot of seasoning to it, it really helps to bring out a lot of different flavors. So salt is going in. I'm going to do almost the same amount of pepper, about quarter to half a teaspoon. You be the judge of that depending on how much pepper you like in your food. And then I have got some garlic powder I'll do about a quarter of a teaspoon of this because it's pretty potent. And even though we are cooking with onions, I'm also going to do some onion powder just to kind of bring that flavor out a little more. Same thing, quarter of a teaspoon. And maybe one more. That feels good. I'm going to just dust off my fingers a little bit. I don't know why I'm dusting off my fingers because the next thing I'm going to do is actually going to be to reach into this bowl and just start mixing things around. I just felt dirty. <laughs> I need clean hands before I start touching my food. So I'm just going to kind of toss everything, scrunch it all together, and all of that oil and all of those herbs and spices are going to really start to come together and make sure that everything is very well seasoned so that every bite that you take of your meal is going to have the same flavor profiles, even though each vegetable is going to have a slightly different flavor. It's a nice way to just kind of blend everything together. So now that these are all nice and mixed, now I'm going to wipe off my hands again because I'm quite oily and I do not want to be dropping any glass bowls in the kitchen. And I'm just going to take a baking dish because I'm only doing a two person meal tonight. I'm just going to use a glass pie pan, but you use what you've got. Everything will work for you as long as it can go in the oven. And I'm just going to get these vegetables into the dish. And actually that onion was so big. I have a little bit of leftovers. So I'm just going to save them off to the side. I might even just roast them on another day and throw them in a salad. It's the nice thing about vegetables is they'll keep in your fridge until you're ready for them. Okay, so I'm just going to get these vegetables out of the way, wash my hands, and I will show you what we do with the chicken next. Okay, so it's time for the main event and that is our chicken. So for this recipe, I am using bone-in skin-on chicken thighs. You can actually use any chicken piece that you like. I've done this with chicken breast that I've just split in half so that it cooks a little more quickly. You can even use wings or drumsticks. It's a little trickier to stuff them, but I have done it. So you can commit to however you want to do your chicken. Use what you like, use what you have. 
I do recommend though that you use something that is bone in and skin on. It takes just a little bit longer to cook, but that's a good thing because that way the vegetables have more time to cook as well and everything is finished together. Boneless, skinless, you risk the chance that the chicken is going to cook before the vegetables and then things are a little off kilter while you're cooking. So that's my one advice, bone in, skin on, but beyond that, you use whichever pieces of the chicken that you like best. So I'm going to start by seasoning these. And so I'm just going to go across the top of the chicken with a little bit of olive oil. And I'm actually not going to bother seasoning the bottom because it's going to cook on top of the vegetables, which means it's actually going to pick up all of the oil and the seasonings that we put on those. One less thing to do. So I'm going to try to keep one hand clean so that I can season without contaminating my seasoning. So with one hand, I'm just going to rub the olive oil all over the chicken skin. And this is just going to help not only allow the spices to stick, but it will also get you a really nice crispy golden skin, just like if you were slow roasting an entire chicken. One of those shortcut tricks I had mentioned. Now that they are nicely covered, I'm just going to go in with some salt. And I do like to be very generous with salt when I'm cooking chicken because the skin absorbs a lot of the flavor. Whether or not you choose to eat the skin, it does allow the seasoning to permeate all the way through the meat. So don't be shy with it. And it's always never as much as you think it is, especially if you're sprinkling with your hands. I think I've mentioned before, I have measured my pinches and they're about an eighth of a teaspoon. So even for all of these pinches, I'm really only using a quarter to maybe a half a teaspoon of salt total. Okay, so that's the salt. We will go in with some pepper. So I'm just gonna do a pretty even sprinkle across the top. You can always use less pepper if you don't like things too peppery. I love the taste of black pepper though, so I always go really big on the pepper with my chicken. So we'll do another sprinkle there. And a final sprinkle on this guy. Some of these are a little bit bigger than the others. They should all finish at around the same time though. But I just wanna make sure that they're all very evenly coated. Next thing I'm going to do is a little bit of garlic powder. So just give that a generous sprinkle. It's probably gonna be about a quarter of a teaspoon total. There we go. You can always use more though, or you can use less. If you, if you wanna go light on your seasoning, you know, this is your meal. So you do it in a way that makes you happy. You season with your heart. And then let's see, that was garlic powder. This is going to be the onion powder. Another good sprinkle there. And if you've never roasted an entire chicken before, this is actually a great first step to just kind of practice and get used to the idea of cooking with chicken. It's a little bit easier, it's a little bit more forgiving because you can add time, you can finish it sooner. Um, so if you've never done it before, start with this and then in another episode, I will show you how to do an entire roast chicken, but we'll save that for another day. Okay, so now that these are nicely seasoned, I can get in there because everything else is gonna be a one-time use thing. So I'm just going to give these a little bit of a pat and a little bit of a rub to get the spice as evenly distributed as possible. And for the rosemary and the lemon, it's actually going to go under the skin and that's what makes this kind of a, a cool recipe. It looks really fancy, but it's so simple. So what I'm going to do is just kind of start by loosening the skin to make kind of a pocket for the rosemary and the lemon. And if you've never done this before, I'm gonna be honest with you, it's, it's kind of weird. It's something you have to get used to, but after you've done it a couple of times, you kind of learn to stop thinking about it. But if you've never done it before, it's a strange feeling. Okay, so now that it's kind of loose and you can see I can get my fingers under there, I'm going to just go in with one ring of lemon that we cut up earlier and just put it so that it's under the skin and directly on top of the chicken. And what it's going to do is as it cooks, the lemon is going to kind of melt into the chicken and it's going to give it a really nice lemony flavor. So we'll get another one in there. And the final piece of lemon, like so. And then on top of the lemon, I've got some rosemary here. So I tried to trim, when you bring rosemary home, it usually comes in some pretty long pieces. I just trimmed them into about Oh, three inch pieces and that will be about the length of the chicken thighs. So I'm just going to go in and on top of the lemon and under the skin, I'm going to put one sprig of rosemary each. And because I'm dealing with raw chicken right now, any rosemary that I don't use tonight is going into the trash. I do not want to risk any kind of salmonella. Don't do it, it's not a good time. Yeah, I've got like two pieces of rosemary left. Actually, I can even put the extras better plan on top of the vegetables because then nothing goes to waste, right? That's what we'll do. One and two and the extras. It's only going to make it taste better. Okay, so with these chicken pieces now, I'm just going to get them into the baking dish 
and you might have to kind of fiddle with it depending on the shape and the size of the baking dish you're using, but I think I eyeballed this pretty well that I can get all four chicken pieces, yes, right on top. Let me just get this mat out of the way here so I can show you what it looks like. I'm trying to do this with my clean parts of my hands. Okay, so what's happening here is the chicken is kind of covering all of the vegetables. That's going to actually trap some steam in so that the vegetables steam while they roast. That's going to be another little bit of a shortcut to help everything cook more quickly. Just wanna give these a final check to make sure nothing's really hanging out too much. So again, as all of this cooks, the rosemary and the lemon is going to infuse the skin, the meat, all of the juices from the chicken are actually going to drip down and help to further flavor all of the vegetables. Everything really mingles and brings its own flavor to the party and makes it taste like such a low and slow meal, but it's actually very quick cooking. So I'm going to wash my hands, and then after I'm cleaned up, I'm going to just get this into an oven at 450 degrees for about half an hour. What we're looking for is the potatoes to be soft and the chicken will reach an internal temperature of 165 degrees Fahrenheit. I highly recommend you use a thermometer when you're dealing with poultry because you just wanna make sure it's cooked all the way through. You may have to adjust the cooking times though, depending on the size of your chicken, what pieces that you're using, but the rule of thumb is 30 minutes as your baseline, soft potatoes, cooked chicken, and you're good to go. Okay, so 30 minutes worked like a charm. Let's have a look at this chicken. Just very carefully try to get it out of the oven here because this pan is hot. There we go. And look at that. The chicken is so nice and golden brown. And because I put the lemon and the rosemary underneath the skin, it kind of helped to raise the chicken skin up. So it's really nice and crispy. It looks like it's been in the oven for hours, but it's actually only been 30 minutes. So let me show you how to plate this up. I'll just take some tongs here. And since we've got two big and two small chicken thighs, I'm just going to take one of each size, keep things nice and balanced. Of course, if I was making this just for myself, I might eat the big ones for dinner and keep the smaller ones for lunch the next day. I've got a potato here that's not letting go of the chicken. There we go. All right, so we'll just take a piece of chicken and another one of these small guys. It's also really pretty. Just the way the rosemary is poking out of the end, is, you know, it comes with a little bit of built-in garnish. It's very nice. And then, I'll just take some of these roast vegetables and the potatoes are so nice and soft. And the onions, because we cut them up into some different sized pieces, a few of them are really nice and soft. Some of them are kind of crispy and golden brown and you just, like I had mentioned earlier, get a really nice combination of flavors. And then the rosemary smells just amazing. You have to make this just so you can smell how good your house is going to smell. Let's see, I've got some purple potatoes, I've got some white potatoes. Where's some of those red ones? Here we go. Make sure there's a little bit of everything on this plate, right? Give me another red one. There we go, and you can see how some of the potatoes too are just nice golden brown. They look fantastic. That's cool enough, we'll get that out of the way a little bit. And we'll just set those off to the side. Maybe uh, make it a little extra fancy tonight. We'll take a sprig of rosemary just kind of use it to garnish a little bit. Look at that. That is a beautiful day off chicken dinner, but it's ready early enough to have it on a weeknight. What a great kind of meal. And here we have a beautiful rosemary and lemon roast chicken, quick enough for any night of the week. As always, this recipe can be found in the description below. Please like and subscribe for more videos. I'm Jessica. Thanks for watching.